In this video, we're going to define several concepts associated with reaction rates, and we're going to define the quantity which is going to define our rate of reaction. Okay, so we have this uh, typical reaction here, which we used throughout the equilibrium playlist, which has uh, reactants A and B going to products C and D, and each of their stoichiometric coefficients is indicated by this value nu in front of them, nu A, nu B, nu C, nu D. So if we look at the number of moles of each of these uh, quantities here, each of these chemical species, this is going to be a time-dependent value in kinetics because the number of moles is going to be changing. Thus, we're going to be looking at rates, reaction rates. So the number of moles, if we define it as a function of time, is going to equal the number of moles of A at time zero, and then minus, because it's a reactant, it is disappearing, its stoichiometric coefficient, nu A, times the quantity extent of reaction uh, from the equilibrium playlist, C. So C is a, now a function of T because our extent of reaction changes over time. The amount of uh, products and reactants is changing over time, thus our extent of reaction is changing. That This value is defined in the first video of the equilibrium playlist. So similarly for all the other species, we can define these values number of moles of B at time zero minus its stoichiometric coefficient times extent of reaction. Then we have a difference in C because it is a product, so it is being produced, so you have a plus sign there times its stoichiometric coefficient. And then D just comes along as well, pretty much the same as C, but just replace all the appropriate values to make it the case for D. Okay, so that defines all four of our number of moles as a function of time. Now we want to take the time derivative of all these values. So we're going to differentiate both of these sides with respect to time. So what we get is dNA of T dt, change of number of moles of A with respect to time, is equal to well, the initial moles, that's a constant. That's just some value that the number of moles of A is at time equals zero. So that has no time derivative. And then uh, C of T has a time derivative. Nu A is a constant. So we're going to have minus uh, nu A times the derivative of our extent of reaction with respect to time. And I'm sure you can follow through the math and tell fairly quickly that this is going to be analogous for the other four values. And the only caveat that we'll have to keep in mind is the fact that once we get to C, we are dealing with products. So this becomes a plus. And I'm just going to leave off the uh, uh, parentheses T there just because I think we can we know which functions do and do not depend on time by now, as we've seen them all written up there. So our last value, uh, plus nu, nu d, dc, dt. Okay, so these are all the rates of change of the number of moles of each chemical species of, of, of all the reactants and products. But we can define, uh, we're more interested in concentration generally than number of moles. And concentration, if you define it as molarity, is just the number of moles divided by the volume. So if we talk about chemical species A specifically, the concentration of A in molarity, indicated by these square, bracket, square brackets, is equal to number of moles of A divided by volume of the system. And the volume of the system is going to be, we'll just assume that's a constant and that it is accessible to all of these here. Okay, so if we do that, we see that um, we def if we just divide the number of moles by volume, then we get to concentration. So if we have dNA over V dt, that is the change of the molarity of A over time. And that is going to be equal to, it's just this value divided by V. So it's minus nu A over V dc dt. Okay, so we have the analogous values again for b, c, and d. I'll just quickly write all of those out. Minus nu b over v dc dt. 
D product C DT is plus again because that is a product divided by a volume. The volume is just the same for all four of them because they are in the same system, so they have the same total volume accessible to all their particles at whatever concentration they're at. Nu D divided by volume divided by DC DT. Okay, so you see this term come up in all four of these. You have a 1 over V DC DT, and that appears in all four uh, rates of the change in molarity over time for all of our chemical species. So it's going to be useful to us to define a quantity called V of T, or V, which is defined as 1 over volume DC of T, DT. And this V of T is called our rate of reaction. So we take our extent of reaction and we differentiate it with respect to time and then divide by volume and that gets us in terms of concentrations rather than number of moles and everything is great and we have defined what we have our, as our rate of reaction there and just so that we are clear I'm going to write down that this is the C is called the extent of reaction as defined at the beginning of the equilibrium playlist Okay, so this is what we're interested in primarily in this playlist is our rate of reaction there. So our rate of reaction, if you define it in terms of uh, these values here, as you see there's a very clear substitution there. So dA dt is just going to equal minus nu A times V of t. So V of t, our reaction rate, we don't, the extent of reaction is not something we necessarily know offhand, but it's fairly quick to see what uh, the change in any of these given molarities is. So this is going to be equal to uh, minus 1 over nu A dA dt. It's also equal to minus 1 over nu B dB dt. But you see with all of these, it's their stoichiometric coefficient is it's their change in concentration over time divided by their stoichiometric coefficient. So for all of them, you get on an equal footing there because the stoichiometric coefficient just linearly scales the value by whatever it is it is. So our rate of reaction is kind of uh, how it's how it would how the rate of the reaction would be changing for something which has a stoichiometric coefficient of one. And you'll notice here um, our extent of reaction has units of moles and then our time has units of seconds in SI units. And volume, uh, we generally like to work with liters. So we have moles per liter. So the units of V of T would be mole per liter per second, which is also equal to mole per liter is a molar per second. So our reaction rate has units of molar per second. And it tells us about how the reaction, how the change in concentration would be for some chemical species with a stoichiometric coefficient of 1.